would you say the fastest clock device is in your computer? The processor? Nope. It's actually the PCIe bus. Unless you're an exception to the rule, but for the vast majority of you, it's the PCIe bus. PCI Express Gen 5 at 32 gigahertz? 32 gigacycles, but you can get two bits per cycle. It's not double data rate, not exactly. That has to do with signal encoding. They're moving to something different from PCIe Gen 6, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about Hyper M.2 X16 Gen 5 card. This is the first truly earnestly PCIe Gen 5 X16 device that maybe would justify the investment in a TRX50 or a WRX90 or a Sapphire Rapid Xeon platform. So what this card offers you is the capability to run four Gen 5 M.2. So we've taken a look at, uh, let's see, there's really only two good ones, the Crucial and the Maximum from Fison. Technically the Maximum from Fison, uh, Fison makes a controller and a lot of people utilize the controller so there's a lot of drives that are based on Fison's controller other than just, I have the reference one because Fison sent it to me. And it's interesting, and it's good, and it's very fast. Right now the Fison is the maximum speed one that I've tested. Although Crucial has a revision of the T700, which is supposed to beat it. But again, we're just, we're really pushing the envelope. What most people don't realize is that the flash media itself is not rated for the speeds that it has been pushed to. We are binning the clock speed at which different pieces of flash media will run at in order to get the ridiculous transfer rates and we're perhaps neglecting the latency of that transfer. This card requires an X16 slot to work and there, it doesn't do any bifurcation on its own. It relies on the motherboard to do the bifurcation. What that means is that even if you have the latest and greatest Intel or AMD desktop platform, I'm talking LGA 1700 and AM5, this doesn't really work for you. There are a couple of boards out there that will do X4, 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 X4 bifurcation on the AMD platform at Gen 5. But the problem is then you don't have any lanes left over for uh, anything else. And pushing, you know, 14 gigabytes per second per drive is a real struggle for those CPUs to keep up with. No, this is, this is better suited to a truly workstation class product. You might be able to make the argument that you could run your GPU at X8 and run two Gen 5 devices on this instead of four, and this would be a reasonable solution for that. Okay, maybe, but really this is meant for TRX50 or WRX90, the Threadripper workstation. I did all, almost all of my testing on this with ASUS's WRX90 motherboard. And when I say what's the fastest thing in your computer, I'm talking about the PCI Express interface. It's 32, billion transfers per second, which is about 16 gigahertz signaling speed, I think. So I wanna explain the signaling and everything to do with this so that you understand why this is likely not to work in every single scenario. In fact, a lot of the support that we've done on the level one forums, a lot of the reason that I get some of this hardware is to help test it, it seems like, because there's not a lot of testing going on for all the combinations of hardware and devices. So this is, the Gen 5 version of the card that Asus had, which was Gen 4. MSI had one, Gigabyte had one, ASRock had one. And they all had slightly different designs, but they weren't necessarily all intercompatible. The cards themselves, the M.2 cards, are located physically close to the, the bus edge connector on this card, and that helps with signal integrity. You see, if you're a really clever PCB designer and you design a board like this and you do a really good job and you can maintain PCIe Gen 5 signal integrity from the connector to the slot, you don't have to add more chips to this to retime and redrive the signal. If you look at ASUS's WRX80 motherboard, there's a huge bank of PCIe, PCI Express redrivers that are right on the motherboard to help with signal integrity. And that's a Gen 4 board. We've moved on to Gen 5. Fison, for its part, because redriving has become 
such a uh, a hot button issue and such a frontier of the latest and greatest in terms of computers, uh, they're making their own redrivers and retimers now at this point. And they've also changed the layout of M.2 devices. So like the controller is in the middle on some of their devices away from the connector. But usually having the chip located really close to the connector is really good for signal integrity. So Asus for their part in the WIRX90, the three bottom slots on that motherboard have BIOS controls for controlling the redriver. ASRock has some external connections that are uh, Gen 4 and Gen 5, and the mini cool edge connector on their board, as well as the slim SAS connections. And in the BIOS for those, there are exposed options. Sometimes it doesn't exactly tell you that you're controlling a redriver, it just says this is level one, level two, level three. Ha, <laughs> level one. Uh. But you have to set that sometimes if your U.2 device is not connected because there's a redriver there, redriving through signal and everything else. Some of the mini cool edge cables that I've covered in past videos, that's the Gen 5 capable, you know, external interface cable, those have drivers, redrivers built into the cable in some cases. PCIe Gen 6, for that part, we're moving to PAM 4. And so it's a slightly different signaling rate and the math is gonna change a little bit, I think, in terms of signaling rate versus, cause you get four bits. And so that's why Gen 6 is expected to be compatible with Gen 5. When Gen 5 rolled out, it was basically a higher clock Gen 4. There's, from what I've read, there's no real extra features from Gen 4 to Gen 5. It's just Gen 5 is double the clock speed because we really needed more, more bandwidth than Gen 4 for some devices basically immediately. And all of that from this tiny little M.2 Gen 5. Okay, so layout on the card. You've got a six pin PCI Express power connector, a mechanical fan, a chassis fan header connector, and you've got your four M.2. There's also a switch at the back which lets you control the fan and you've got four indicator LEDs to tell you which M.2 is busy. This is sort of the minimum level of functionality that you need for something like this. You got a built-in fan, you got a built-in heatsink, you got external power delivery, external power delivery. Yeah, PCI Express slots are rated for 75 watts because the PCI Express slot is rated for 75 watts and you have some vendors like Samsung that are going well beyond the M.2 spec and using more power. Your power budget here at like 20 watts per M.2, because 75 watts, and then you can be five watts over, and then you got fans and some losses and overhead and some other peripherals on here. Not looking good to stay in that 75 watt power envelope. So the extra six pin connector, just make sure, make sure that when you burst over that 75 power, uh, 75 watt power limit, you're good to go. There's also a lot of boards, like desktop boards, that aren't designed to have more than two 75 watt devices. At least they need an extra 12 volt PCIe connector and uh, this will help get around that because then the card can use more like 10, 20 watts from the connector as opposed to 75. And that'll lead to overall better system stability the less power you draw from the motherboard because you're mixing and matching peripherals in a way that the motherboard vendors didn't really necessarily design for, which is interesting in this day and age. There's also some other passive components on here. Most of those components are just to help with power delivery, fan control, or letting the motherboard know, hey, this is a bifurcation card. In auto, you should go ahead and go into bifurcation mode. That's not really super reliable across every uh, generation of motherboard. There's a whole spectrum of, you know, remember WRX80 launched with Threadripper 3000. And so some of those boards just do not detect correctly this kind of stuff to put the slot in automatic bifurcation mode. Intel on their side, generally it works for the workstation. Uh, I've got my Falcon Northwest fire breathing 56 core machine that I love. This works great in that platform. Again, it's an Asus board, Asus Sage W790. It, this, this works great in that. Also tested the W790 Ace, also from Asus. That worked really well, as well as the Gigabyte W790 motherboard, which doesn't support overclocking or anything, but Gen 5 and Gen 5. Now from slot to slot on the motherboard, it will also vary. So if you have trouble, try moving it to a slot closer to the processor. Generally, the slots closer to the processor can be expected to work better because those slots that are a middle distance from the CPU, the PCB designer is really trying to stretch their dollars and not have redrivers unless they absolutely require it. So anyway, the Asus Hyper M.2 X16 Gen 5 card. I'm working on getting my hands on four uh, T700s from Crucial or maybe T705s or four Fison Maximum in order to be able to run this. Because we, we've just been talking hardware, haven't even talked software. <sighs> Intel with their VROC solution is a reasonable RAID solution for this card on both the Sage and the Ace. 
but you're gonna have to get a licensed dongle, which on eBay is about 50 bucks, in order to be able to run quasi hybrid hardware and software RAID with this on Windows. If you're thinking about AMD RAID, AMD RAID is still a three quarter baked solution. They need to not give up on it, but AMD is gonna have to uh, do some more innovation on their hardware RAID thing because even testing it in 2024, I'm not sure the trim is operating correctly, loading this thing down with uh, four SSDs and running a, a mixed config of T700s and Fison Maximum drives, if you will. You could mix different kinds of devices between on motherboard and, you know, on motherboard resources in this really high speed storage. But again, this is like, if you just need a big giant drive that is insanely fast, your best experience, it really is Linux MD and then Intel VROC, and then way, way on past all of that, somewhere in another dimension is AMD's RAID. And I'm sorry to say that, but AMD's gotta put more work in their RAID solution in order to get it into a better spot. This is a good card that does what it says, and it does what it says really well. And it's up to your platform to get it the rest of the way there if you want anything other than four Gen 5 devices running at Gen 5 speeds on your platform, assuming that it has enough PCI Express lanes to get all the connections, which basically means not LGA 1700 or AM5, though technically they do have enough lanes if you don't put anything else in your system. But this is really for workstation class machines with Gen 5, W790, TRX, 50 and WRX 90 and I was I, it seems like there was another one is Ampere or the ARM systems gen 5 I gotta get my hands on one of those maybe that'll be interesting I don't know so our full motherboard compatibility rundown Asus boards whether W790 Sage or Ace or either of the Sage motherboards for AMD there's a Sage TRX 50 and a Sage WRX 90 everything works really well there this works best in the top slots or like the top slot singular or the bottom three slots. It'll work in all of them, but it'll work best in those slots because of the redriver thing, and depending on your M.2. It's not Asus's fault, it's just the combination of your hardware. And that might change if you fiddle with the redriver settings, especially for the bottom three slots, because Asus does expose that for you. For Gigabyte TRX50, Gigabyte doesn't expose as many of those options, and so through a BIOS update or something like that, things may be improved. But generally this works best in the top slot on the board and you'll be better off moving your GPU farther away because GPUs seem to be able to deal with uh, it a little better than this because this is going through a series of connectors and every time you gotta put an electrical signal through a gold plated contact connector, you're losing a little bit of signal. So put this in the top slot on your motherboard. Um, for ASRock's TRX50 motherboard, didn't have any problems in any slots It seemed to auto det detect properly. Even for the problem M.2 devices that I put in here, I put in some M.2, some specific non-Gen 5 devices that are known to cause issues that were like prototype. But we're gonna talk, not gonna talk about that. But this was okay for pretty much everything. I've done some light testing on the AM5 PCIe 5 platform because why not? Intel slot bifurcation, LGA 1700. I, as far as I'm aware, that's not a thing. Does anybody have a board that will actually do that? I don't, I'm not aware of any LGA 1700 board that actually does slot bifurcation. There's a couple of AM5 boards that used to, may still do. I've got an older BIOS I haven't updated. I've been scared to death to update it because it's doing the thing that I needed to do and it's like, oh, I don't know if I want to touch it. For AM5 and X4, 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 X4 slot bifurcation, you still have X4 into one of your M.2. So you could maybe mix and match with that. But I really, this, it doesn't make sense. Like even for whatever your weirdo edge case is for AM5, this doesn't make sense to try to run in, in AM5. This is really at minimum TRX50. Get the 16 core TRX50 if you want to save some, some money. But basically that is what it is. And what this is level one has been a quick look at the Hyper M.2 X16 Gen 5 card from Asus. It would be awesome if there was a version of this that had redrivers but I think most consumers would look at one Gen 5 card and the other Gen 5 card and say, why is this one so much more expensive? So because that one has redrivers and the redrivers will make sure everything always works perfectly. With this, now you know the rest of the story. I'm one of those level one, I'm signing out, you can find me in the level one forum. Yes, I'll see you there.